The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. If you haven't seen the movie Trading Places, folks, go check it out. That's how we'll start off uh, our man Larry's program. Larry, out today on Friday, a well-deserved day off. I'm filling in for him this hour. I uh, feel fortunate to be in the chair. We'll do our best. And we got a market that's moving today, man. We got the S&Ps. Talk about moving. Down 25 points, trading at 41.47 right now. You hit a low of about 41.40. <clears throat> We'll be taking some look at Fibonacci numbers for our man Larry Pesavento. Learned so much from uh, Larry over the years in his use of Fibonacci's, Fib retracements, et cetera. We'll look at some Fib numbers. Uh, just anecdotally, though, that 4140 mark, folks, it's an area on the charts, and it's consistently been one. All right, and this, this is just going back to where we were Friday into Sunday. We got the jobs number last Friday, right? We jumped to 4140. You give it up. Where do we get back to at the end of the day Monday? About 41.40. Chopped around to that area on Tuesday. That's where you finished the day. Okay. You came into the 8.30 numbers on Wednesday, CPI at 41.40. And what did we just do? Well, yesterday, that was the first acceleration. And that's just where we bounced. Just put it on your chart, man, because 41.40, nice round number, as our man Basil Chapman would say. Uh yeah, and I just, uh, it's one of those numbers that stuck out to me recently, not anything to do with Fibonacci in particular, but interesting. Nonetheless, that's where we jump to. And, you know, numbers getting a little dicey right now in terms of, boy, it's quite a sell off, right? Somebody called it an Eiffel Tower in the NASDAQ earlier. Let's just take a look at it because, yeah, it was an Eiffel Tower, man. There's your Eiffel Tower, right? Now I zoom in on it. We've chopped around a bit. Okay, but all things considered, where we are, not that much of a give back in terms of what are we at? Basically where we were at about 10 o'clock in the morning yesterday, basically where we were at about 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, and ironically, pretty much where we were on Monday afternoon in the NASDAQ 100. Back to the S&Ps right now. Okay, Monday, where were we? End of the day on Monday, 4140. Where were we? 4140. So things look dire. Um, but we got huge volatility in both directions, folks. I've been talking about in my newsletter. Um, just patience. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you're not. Easier said than done, okay? Okay. It's not what you can make, it's what you can lose. And patience, because there's gonna be a lot of opportunities in this market, okay? The volatility is not going away tomorrow, not even close. We're dealing with inflation on a core basis that's at 5.6%. I almost feel the need to remind myself and you all out there, okay, that core inflation on CPI was sitting at 5.6%. It actually went up. That's core. Headline, different story, but headline has been helped dramatically by the crude prices, right? Okay, well, that's going away, folks, all right? Again, these are opinions, okay? They can be wrong, but my opinion is that we've probably seen a low in crude for some time, $64.36. I know a recession can be looming. I know deflation could happen out there, okay? But what happens in deflation? Well, sometimes commodities go up, folks, in that in the same way. Um, We'll get into that a little bit later in the program as well. But the reason why you're seeing the headline numbers is because of this chart right here. And let's back it up even a little bit further when you talk about inflation numbers to get the full spike of the war that began between Russia and Ukraine in March of last year. You spike to 130. You get a nice double top. It's been lower lows and lower highs for the better part of 10 straight months. We finally get a spike and keep in mind, we get that spike triggered by OPEC plus. So you get, you know, they've tipped their hand a bit. Okay, are they comfortable with prices at 65 to $70? No, they're not comfortable with prices there. Who's the biggest player in that whole sector? OPEC plus, period, end of sentence. So pressure to the upside for prices. So remember, man, we got core inflation at 5.6%, okay? And now what do we have? We got the banks facing a little bit of a tightening credit issue to put it lightly 
Okay, great discussions in the den earlier today talking about the banks. We'll get into those earnings in a moment. Uh, there's so much going on in this market recently, folks, that I find myself saying, you know, two hours. Yeah, I can do two hours. We got a lot to talk about, man, because there's so much in this market right now, whether it's our markets, whether it's across the globe. The point I'm trying to convey, okay, is be patient. Okay, these moves are not going away. Uh, they're going to be here for some time. They're going to occur in both directions. It's not going to be a one-way trip one way or the other because we have two dueling factors going on here. What we have, which is interesting to think about when you think about it, right? Let me just think for one second here. Is that you have, in one essence, the inflation volatility. Is it is it going away? Is it going away at a pace fast enough for the Fed? That contributes to the interest rate volatility that we're still kind of dealing with, although that's waning a bit, okay? Bad news is good news, good news is bad news, not exactly the scenario anymore. Because we're transitioning, and the coolest part about that transition is it's gonna be a long transition, because we still have core inflation rising at 5.6%, okay? So, it's not like we're gonna be out of the woodworks, because the moment that we tame inflation, what comes next? We're already there, practically. Earnings, recession, pullback. We've talked about the money supply on my program this week, right? M2 money supply. I'll pull it up here. You know what? Let's pull it up right now. Why not? There's your M2 money supply, folks, okay? Uh, money supply to the upside during the pandemic, generational inflation that I have not seen in my lifetime, money supply to the downside, sucked out of the market at a vol um, velocity that we have not seen since like the 80s, not like the 80s, since the 80s. I'll take out those fillers from my words. So that is going to be a factor that, sh if it matters, will help squash inflation, okay, but it's also gonna squash the economy. And so you're gonna have both these factors coming at you, man, which is why you have just mammoth moves on both sides of the market. You know, depending on your strategy, depending on your stops, it's Larry's hour. It's not what you make. It's what you can lose, okay? Uh, I imagine, depending on your strategies, folks, that you could trade this market in both directions, depending on your strategies, and be a big-time winner. So don't chase some of the moves, man. Today, yeah, of course you're going to wish you chased it all as we trade down 50 points in the S&P in a heartbeat. We're now 10 points off of the lows. Excuse me, but... You know, wait for your price points, keep your stops in place because there's going to be dramatic moves in both directions. We're kind of on the other side of a lot of the financial data, economic data, macro data. Now we come into company by company earnings. OK, but next Fed meeting is coming up, folks, May 2nd and 3rd. That's three weeks from that's two weeks from this coming Wednesday is the easier way to put it. Two weeks from this coming Wednesday, we get a Fed meeting, and we get almost all the big earnings before then. I think Apple, the biggest of them all, is, is May 4th. We'll pull that up later, so we don't quite get them. But you're going to get a lot of them, but we don't get any more macro data. And we get a Fed decision, but we get earnings coming at you, folks. Stay tuned. We'll talk about some of those bank earnings when we come back. We'll take a look, filling in for our man Larry Pesavento this hour. And please, folks, give us a call. I'd love to hear what you're talking about, what you're trading, any questions, macro, micro, specific to equities, 877-927-6648. Give me a call. We'll be right back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down 20 points right now. NASDAQ 100 off 102. We get the Dow off 191. And let's jump into some of those banks with their numbers. A little bit of a bounce. It's interesting. I had this up. Early on my program, you can see it came in when I was doing the show. Let's just zoom in on today's action. Started the program off at 9 o'clock. We're chopping around at about 41.65. Boom, right out of the gate, you accelerate above that area. Had the high up here from where we were yesterday. And what I was talking about was maybe 42.08. Didn't quite get there, right? What do we need? 18 extra points. That would have been the 1 to 1 1.618 expansion. Talking some fibs for our man Larry Pezzavento. Just coming off a short-term move from the CPI drop on Wednesday the acceleration back to that same high on Thursday. And what was interesting about that 4208, folks, all right, that's where I'm talking about patience. You know, you miss out today. Well, it was, you'd bat, rather be, excuse me, missing out occasionally, folks, than being stuck in a losing trade when the market's moving against you like it was yesterday, okay? Um, I'm using options to trade this sometimes. You can get wiped out if you keep that trade sometimes. But you also have defined risk at a time when the spy, man, I mean, look at the moves we got going on just from where we were on Wednesday. You get the spy trading from about 412 down to 407, up to 415 and down to 410. Mammoth moves on both sides of it. So try and keep your risk defined. If you're using options, that's one way. If you're using equities, make sure you put your stop in place, man, because this market might go faster and further than you can expect on both sides. Did you see the S&Ps going to 415 when we were at 408 yesterday morning when we were just cascading to lower prices following a CPI on Wednesday? No, probably not. Did you see us at 410 by the middle of the day when this morning looked like the market could do no wrong? No. So never think you're smarter than the market, folks. And I love the saying, it's Larry's hour. It's not what you can make it. It's what you can lose. And you got to keep yourself in the game. That's the other side of it, okay? You trade too large, you put too much exposure out there, you take too big of a loss, what happens? You have to scale it back, maybe you take a break or two. So keep those positions affordable, keep them to where you can manage the risk, that way you can come back, trade the next day, and be in the game. Try and think about that, and it's not always easy, man, um, because you know, you're know you always thinking the next move's right around the corner, and you could be right, and you can, but make sure you keep those things in check, to say the least. 
Uh, okay, talking about a couple articles. Let's see what I got pulled up here for the hour. That's one we'll talk about, but I just before we wanted to talk about that one. Nah, we, I guess we could talk about it. This was just some of the retail sales. I talked about this a bit on my program. So retail sales down in March, a big chunk of that having to do with gas and cars, okay? Uh, gas stations down 5.5%. Department stores down 2.5, electronics down 2.1. You can see the list I have up here. Building materials down 2.1%. Clothing down 1.7. Cars and parts 1.6 to the downside. Furniture down 1.2. Groceries stay the same. And then on the positive side, restaurants and bars, sporting and hobby, health and personal care all barely in the um, positive. And then online with quite a rise of one percent Nine percent. So just getting into some of the numbers, you'll see that retail sales were down 1% in March. But you get into the numbers, man, and energy is such a big factor here. It's going to be very interesting to see where we go forward with energy. All right. I talked about this one in my program this morning, but if you didn't hear it, man, it is worth talking about. Uh, and baseball, I'm going to get to your question in a moment, man. It's a great question. Talking about the GLD versus the XLE, folks. We'll get to that in a moment. But take a look at this. Okay. Not many would realize. I didn't realize it. I look at the market every day, all day. Did you realize that the tech stocks had put almost 90% of the S&P gains? I mean, just as a quick informal poll for people out there in the den, did, did, did you realize that these tech stocks, the seven of them, had added almost 90% of the S&P? We all knew they were large, right? But I didn't realize seven stocks were pushing nine out of every 10 points the S&P has gained this year. The numbers don't lie, as they say. Uh, Apple, the biggest contributor, because market cap wise, they're just the biggest contributor, bottom line. And it's all the usual suspects you could guess, okay? It's the big um, fang stocks out there. But what we're talking about is Apple, Alphabet, Meta, Nvidia, Amazon, Microsoft, and Tesla. 90%. 88 to be exact, okay? And when is this dated? A couple days ago, probably. April 10th, so sometimes this week. Yeah, I mean, even all of us in here, right? I mean, we live and breathe the market, and we had no idea that it was that substantial, okay? Now, you didn't run the numbers, whatever it is. Um, surprising that it's 90%. But these companies alone have added $2.1 trillion of market cap. Apple alone, $549 billion in market cap. The whole S&P, 2.4 trillion. So these companies alone add 2.1 trillion. The other 493 companies in the S&P, 300 billion. Think about that. These seven companies, 2.1 trillion. The other 493, 300 billion added. That's it. For reference, folks, Okay, now Apple has added $549 billion in market cap. I always say it, it's remarkable. Apple has about 16 billion shares outstanding, with a B. Every dollar they move is $16 billion. From yesterday, let's just call it 160. Okay, you almost reached 66 yesterday. You reached it this morning. Apple traded up $6 from yesterday's low to today's high. That's almost $100 billion in market cap added in 24 hours. I just told you that for the entire year, the other 493 S&P stocks have added $300 billion. Apple just added $100 billion in 24 hours. They dwarf anything else going on. It is not a broad rally, okay? Now, it's not a broad decline, I guess, either, because they're in the positive. But keep your eye on these equities, man. Because if they start to roll over, the strength is not in the other equities, folks. The strength is all here. Now, I'm not saying Apple and Microsoft and Tesla and NVIDIA are all going to tank, okay? But you have to be aware of the influence they're having. Because I think even being in the market, you, it's tough to keep up. Well, I'm just zooming in here. In terms of the moves... And boy, we are in an upper boundary line. That's all I'll say about Apple, right? I mean... You can almost add a, a channel line here, right? You add a channel line, you bump it up to the top, and if Apple's got woes, we all got woes, man, okay? Uh, Apple, what's Apple need to trade down 
what, 10, 20 bucks? 20 bucks Apple trades down and they wipe out every single gain every other company in the S&P 500 has had. And that only takes us back to where it was a month ago. Just staggering numbers, man. Uh, so that's Apple. We're looking at Microsoft, another big one, of course. Look at these 618s. I always talk about 618s everywhere in this market, man. Uh, where'd Microsoft pull back to? A 618 and the entire move higher. Pretty remarkable. Uh, but getting into a little bit of a shorter term time frame, we'll go back just the last year. We're going to take that off for some clarity. And yeah, they come into the year at about 230. We're pushing 285. We're right back to where we were in August, man. From Microsoft, NVIDIA, you talk about a run. From 140 to 280. We'll take a look at some of these other equities, folks. And uh, baseball, we'll get to your question when we come back. GLD versus the XLE. We'll take a look at both of them when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. S&P's down about 29 points right now, pushing back to that 4140 area. We spiked to just above 4150, and boom, we're going to challenge that low that we just made as I came on the air at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, jumping on. So great question in the YouTube Tiger's Den talking about uh, sold the last of the GDX and went into the XLE. Thoughts? Well, I've been talking about energy prices potentially being a pressure to the upside. So I do like that. Um, you get a gold pullback of 50 bucks today. We're seeing some dollar strength. Um, but the bottom line really is I like them both, man. I really do. Looking at the position that we're in right now, uh, no reason why you couldn't probably be in a little bit of energy and gold. Depending on what the economy faces here, 
I mean, look at the run that we've had in the GLD, right? You're running from an area of 150 up to 190 yesterday. You get back some of it. Let's put this back even on a five-year weekly. You see we're pushing the upper boundaries, okay, as gold is pushing the highs, of course. 186 is where we're at right there. And interesting, right? I talked about it as well, the 618. COVID lows to the highs, even gold. Pulls right back to the 618, and that's held pretty well. You dip below that area, made it almost to the 786, but you're talking about three years where gold's only been trading above, below there for a month or two at one point. We take a look at the XLE as the market trades low of 41.39. A uh, little bit of a different story on the XLE in terms of the upside trajectory from $22 for the COVID lows. And boy, last uh, couple of years, just a straight shot. And this year we're sitting at 86, 82. But yeah, um, I don't think you could go wrong protecting yourself with either of those. And maybe you dabble in a little bit of both of them to protect yourself, baseball. Um, because in this environment, that could be the case. Now, I've been talking about money supply, right? We, we pulled up the chart earlier. And, you know, what really got us going is this article from Bloomberg talking about monetarists. And this was out Monday, I believe, <clears throat> April 11th. Is that Monday? I think it is. Time goes so quick. That's Tuesday. Uh, yeah, but that's a, yeah, so April, uh, Monday night, Tuesday evening, okay, is when it's out. And it's talking about that these same monetarists that predicted the high, sky high inflation are now looking for the potential um, for it to be a stark change in terms of money supply getting rapidly ripped out of the economy and talking about that uh, central banks, vast quantitative easing programs some sharp rate cuts in the pandemic led to double digit money supply growth. A year later, inflation was above their target and well on pace for 10 percent. But the reverse is taking place. And if they don't change course, we could be dealing with some stark realities. Uh, one of those is potentially recession or deflation, okay? If the central bankers lose this one, all right, and what they're talking about here is says, um, they want officials to stop shrinking their balance sheets through so-called quantitative tightening. Cutting rates should even be considered probably by a lot, is the quote, as one of these um, economists out there. They need to restore positive money growth. The monetarists won the inflation forecasting contest, but the central bankers claim that was a fluke. Now for the rematch. If the central bankers lose this one, as in if they're right again, man, okay, and if this money supply matters, it's really hard to think why money supply does not matter, okay? Um, and we move in, so if the central bank loses this one, as in if, they, if it does matter, and the central bank says it doesn't, I don't know how you're a central banker and you say money supply doesn't matter, because isn't the whole thing they're influencing is the supply of money circulating around the economy? Uh, will there finally be a reckoning in a clear out recession or deflation? Okay. Now, we see where we go from there. What's so interesting, folks, uh, some of the things that can perform best during deflation, okay, you're going to see the prices of goods and services potentially decrease. What if we'd been talking about goods and services, right? What if they really squash it? And what if the lag there really squashes it dramatically, having declining deflation in those areas, okay? Uh, what you look for in a period of deflation is that investments that can maintain or increase their value during that period. Some of those, okay, is whether you talk about cash and cash equivalents on short terms, okay? The purchasing power of cash actually increases when you have the prices going down, right? It's interesting how this is gonna shift, man, okay? Uh, government bonds in particular, you know what else? Gold and precious metals, real estate, okay? Um, the value of real estate tends to be less volatile than other classes, goods and services are where the prices would see it decline. You're facing recession or deflation, and of course, defensive stocks during that time. You see gold and silver listed in there when people talk about that. These are general areas, folks, and we have a lot going on in this economy, so it doesn't mean that those are going to be winners, even if that's what we face. But you got to pay attention to it, man. And the money supply deal is real, okay? That's my opinion, but it has to be a factor of some degree. Whether it's the only factor, yeah, probably not the case, okay? The truth lies somewhere in between, as many say and usually is correct. Um, yeah, and we go from there, right? Pretty interesting, though.
And we get to find out, man. And that's why this volatility is going to continue, folks. It seems like every economic data point we get, there's something for both parties in there in terms of you bearish, you bullish. Which one are you going? Is good news bad news or is it good news? And even if it is good news, is it really good news? Because you got to read into the numbers, right? As in we get CPI prints, headline number. And this is where, you know, on the nightly news on Wednesday, I didn't catch it. But I'm guessing they came out with something like inflation's down 5%. Um, no, you got to get into the core. You got to get into the super core, whatever they're talking about now. You dig into those numbers, man, and we got a long way to go. All right? Yeah, so we'll see where we go, to say the least. All right, what else do we got pulled up in here? Let's see. That was retail sales. Let me jump around to other articles we're talking about. We can get into some of the numbers we got next week as well. We talked about the seven tech stocks driving everything. Uh, let's talk a little bit of Tesla. Yeah, why not? So this story out this morning on Bloomberg, and I would agree. Tesla goes after America's top-selling SUVs. The price war means the Waddle Y can now be purchased for less than the average new vehicle in the U.S. Now, what's so interesting about Tesla is that they get all the headlines and the flack when they decrease their prices, okay? Now, that's a longer-term chart. Let's just take a look at the past year or so, all right? I'm going to take the Fibonacci off here for some clarity. And so they've taken some flack recently when they've brought down the prices of a Tesla, and boy, if you bought a Tesla at the end of last year, you got hosed, man. Your resale value is just wiped out to the tune of ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars sometimes. Okay, so it's tough when you're kind of screwing over your customers. The most recent ones saying, "Boy, thank God we got that last customer in there to buy at the last price, because we really appreciate that they bought that car for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars over what the next person was going to pay only a week later." Okay, there's that angle to the story, and I'm sure they got a lot of angry customers, justifiably so. All right. But what is intriguing is, is that they catch all the flack because they publish those prices right there on their website, okay? But this is going on at other car dealerships all over the country, folks. They just don't have to publish their prices. That's the key. And you're going to see it reflected in the numbers. And it is leading people to say, you know what, man? Car prices are sinking. If I need a new car, maybe I'll go wait a year. If we got a recession coming, maybe I'm going to wait a year. Uh, and that's going to weigh on things. I can tell you myself, folks, I have a coupe. I have a BMW coupe right now. I think it's a 2019, 2018. Great car. I love it. Probably need a little bit more space in my vehicle eventually. Uh, Tommy is now two years and two months old. Crazy how time flies, right? Over two years ago, he was born. Um, so we're just getting into where we're doing more activities. We need a little bit more room, but I'm not in a rush right now. And I'm probably not the only one, man, uh, because there is not a need to get out there and compete to buy a car when it seems like the next three, six, nine, 12 months might be a little bit more attractive to buyers. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at Tesla. We'll take a look at some of the other equities. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. S&P is down about 29 points right now. Trading at 41.43, just off the lows of the session. I got a chart of McDonald's in here. Uh, question in the den, talking about McDonald's. Boy, this thing's been on quite a run. We had McDonald's in my newsletter for some time. Had a nice profitable trade in it. Closed it out a little bit prematurely as we basically make a new high today. So no matter where you closed it out. Uh, longer term, not sure what you're doing with this. Longer term, you probably can't go wrong. A little bit tough getting into the equity when you trade up. 10% in a period of a month shorter term and it's always tough trying to figure out entries on a longer term basis in terms of you know timing entries on a longer term basis can be a tricky game because sometimes you miss it what I would say is whenever you're thinking about something longer term like let's say right now right it's a perfect example. Let's say right now you want to get in McDonald's, right? And you say to yourself, man, should I get in at 289? And I'm talking longer term, all right? I'm talking positions, whether retirement, just a longer term position. You say to yourself, man, I want to get into McDonald's. The thing's on a tear, okay? It's traded up 30 bucks since where we were just a month ago. And you can see that this thing has $30 runs in it left and right, right? I mean, you go back to where it was in October. You trade from about 235 240 up to right about 270 area. You just made that $30 run. What did it do last time though? You got quite a pause in there. Okay, we've had a couple $30 runs here and there. That or thereabouts and we've had some pullbacks as well. So shorter term basis, a little dicey, but what I think about when I do that, if I'm uncomfortable putting a position in when the stock is run, but I wanna get in there, especially right now when you can go out and use that money to get four to five percent risk-free per year okay so what you can do is you can say you know what I'm gonna scale in that and I'm gonna let's say you got ten thousand dollars you want to put into McDonald's you can say you know what I'm gonna put you know thirty three hundred bucks in right now I'm gonna put thirty three hundred bucks in in six months and I'm gonna put thirty three hundred bucks in in another six months so I scale in over the next year I buy it three different times maybe you do it um, four months whatever it is right you space it out um, but space it out like that. See what time of type of time frame you're comfortable with and figure out how much capital you want in that position. And then you got the best of both worlds because you're in the equity if it runs up, you're making profits, okay? If it drops down, you know you're on in that position anyway. If the market really pulls back, which is a headwind that it could face right now, right? And everything gets sucked down if that happens you get an opportunity to buy in at a lower price and we got some volatility like i've been saying for the next year and a half so depending what you're looking at um that's one area you could play it in there but mcdonald's is a good stock man mickey d's ain't going away okay forever um and real estate what did i just talk about right mickey d's is a real estate stock boy these real estate stocks man maybe that's the writing on the wall right there as in i talked about deflation Areas, what could, you know, real estate is one nice area. Um, DR Horton had their numbers today, I believe. 
Look at the run this thing's been on. You're pushing basically all-time highs. Yeah, 110, but you're back to where this thing was the first week of last year. You're back to where it was basically in December of 2021, right, when the market was pushing all-time highs. You just traded up from where it was on 60 bucks up to 100. Real estate might be a nice play because we might be coming into some deflationary environments, man. Now, what's so interesting, because I have these conversations with my dad as well, is that stock prices could climb too, folks, because... It's going to be interesting to see what the dollar is worth and what it can buy. And depending on if inflation is squashed or if it runs, the dollar is worth less. So it would make sense that if you're buying an equity, that that equity could be worth more if you're paying dollars if the dollar is worth less. Right? It's kind of how it goes with Forex, with currencies, in the same degree. All right, we're jumping around in cars. I got a good car debate going on right now. Uh, not even a debate, just good information. We got our man Baseball in the Tiger's Den talking about get a Toyota 4Runner, best all-around family vehicle. See him all the time on the road. Um, just throwing that out there, not by opinion his, but I know a lot of them like it. Um, and what do we got in the den they're talking about? Uh, Ford Bronco Sport. In 2001 and just love it. Yeah, those Ford Broncos, man. I was in a Ford Bronco I'll tell you, quick story. I was in a Ford Bronco, man, 1997, and I'm talking about one of those big classic Broncos, right? One of my buddies in high school. No, it's 1998. Senior year, 1998, we're riding around a beautiful Ford Bronco. We had just seen a movie. It's an interesting story. Just seen a movie. Uh, we're riding around Natick, I think. Good old Natick, Mass. Where were we? I think it was Natick. Got to pull it up. Somewhere in there. And there you go. Um, and... One of my buddies at the time, to be in high school, he had an awesome car, man. He had just a beautiful, older, big, classic Ford Bronco, right? One of the big ones right there. Uh, good old OJ's Bronco, just rolling, man. So we're looking for a gas station after the movie got out. We, I think we saw a 930 movie. We're seniors in high school. Might have even been the summer after senior year before college, okay? And we can't find a gas station that's open. He's about to run out of gas, right? So we're going to one station. We're going to the other. If you know these beautiful small towns in Massachusetts, folks, you know that it's not like you're off the highway and every gas station's open 24 hours a day. They close at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I think the pump shut down, whatever it is. So we go to one gas station. It's closed. He goes, I think I got like 20 miles, 15, 10 miles left in my tank. This is an old Bronco, all right? It does not have a digital display that tells you how many miles you have till empty like they do now. And I say, okay, I think I think the one that will be open is, and I think it was Natick, I'm trying to remember, is in Natick Center. Okay, so we go to Natick Center. There's one gas station there. It's closed. We say, oh, we're in trouble, man. And my, my buddy's looking around who's driving. And we're a little bit like, I don't think we even have the gas to make it to the next one. Now, we're seniors in high school. I don't think we even had cell phones at the time, right? Dating myself. I got my 25th year high school reunion coming up as we go, okay? So nobody has phones. It's like 11 o'clock at night. We can't find a gas station. We're about to run out of gas. Um, we're being good. Everyone's sober, being nice little children, going to see a movie with friends. And... What happens is we roll through center and my buddy's distracted and he's looking for down the street at it to see if there's other gas stations. And what does he do is he rolls through a red light. OK, and we're in downtown Natick and I think it's Natick, man. I'm going to have to find it. But imagine a downtown for one of these beautiful Massachusetts towns. You got brick little buildings everywhere. And what happens is you can't see the intersection. It's not open. Right. We realize at the last second that he's running the red light. And as we come through the intersection, we pass the building and you get a glimpse of the other side of the road. And what's coming, man? A Mack truck. Square out, coming, 90 degrees. We probably had about four tenths of a second before it hits us, right? For the Bronco, okay? So what happens, and this is where, you know, your kids, folks, when you're young, okay, you're distracted, <laughs> period. The, the accident rates, you know, in the first year, two, up to 25, that's why it's so expensive to rent a car. You can't even rent a car before you're 25. It's just life, kids do stupid stuff, all right? My buddy made a mistake, it shouldn't mean we all die, right? Nonetheless, what happens? We get T-boned by the Mack truck, pushes us off, the Mack truck veers off, hits a tree, the Mack truck gets totaled because the axle's broken, 
The Ford Bronco gets totaled. We do about seven spins around and everybody gets out completely fine of the vehicle. Ford Bronco, right? Gotta love it, man. Very fortunate to be alive and walk out of that vehicle, man. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment for our man, Larry Pesavento. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we'll keep on the, the cars. Why not? And yeah, very fortunate. Just finishing up that conversation in the Tiger's Den, man, as we wrap up the program. Uh, number one. You know, the poor guy driving the Mack truck, man, right? You got young kids who are 18, run to red light. He's probably looking like we're punks just being – accidents happen, man, you know? And, and boy, he was unhappy, justifiably so. Uh, his truck was totaled, man. But, you know, when you're 17, when you're 18, folks, driving, boy, it's a scary deal um, when you're that young out there just because you're not used to it. And when you're that young, man, you're distracted. There were three four of us in the car. We weren't doing anything but driving, but you can see – how we needed gas, you're looking around, et cetera. We're also fortunate that the Mack truck was empty at the time, much less force going in. Um, but with throwing out cars out here, I'll tell you, one of my favorite vehicles out there right now, boy, it's pricey, um, is the GMC Yukon Denali. Oof, those things are beautiful, man. But they might run you about 90, 100 grand brand new, which is why they're trying to push them out. But what I've also found is the Kia Telluride. Dollar for dollar, man, that might be the best vehicle out there for an SUV. If you're looking for a three-row SUV where you can get some captain seats in the second row, uh, 
the Kia Telluride dollar for dollar is probably the best one out there, man. And there, of course, you know, Hyundai, uh, Hyundai out there has, what's the one that, is it the GV70? I got to get their SUV, but they're getting into the electric game, man, which is the perfect segment, $18 billion. And one of my buddies was talking about the other day, man, when you got Hyundai, when they pump out an all EV SUV on the top line, because they have just some huge successful SUVs when they plow into that, which they're doing now, okay? $18 billion is what they're putting in that could be a game changer. And you're going to face some competition from the big dogs out there in a big way. But if you haven't checked out the Telluride, folks, dollar for dollar, I think it's probably the best SUV out there. I really do. Um, and Hyundai's a great one on top of that as well. Yeah. All right. That was a quick hour, man. Stay tuned, folks. I think we got our man Basil Chapman. Coming in live. I just saw the message. You got to love it. He's in next hour, folks. Basil Chapman. And uh, yeah. And then we got our man Jacob racking up the hour. Stay tuned, folks. Always a treat. Have a great Friday. And stay tuned for our man Basil doing double duty as well. He's up for a live hour next. S&P's off 25. Thanks so much. Have a good one.